In this lesson, we're going to look at characteristics of logarithmic functions with base 10 and base e. Now, if you haven't already done so, I'd like you to go through this investigation. Once you've done this investigation and gone through to look at what all the different characteristics are and looked at the differences and similarities between logarithmic functions with base e and base 10, then you can go down to the examples at the bottom. So let's go ahead and look at example one. You're going to scroll past all of the investigation here, which you've hopefully have gone through already. All right, so here's example one. It says predict the x-intercept, the number of y-intercepts, and the end behavior, the domain, and the range of the following function. Use the equation of the function to make your predictions, and then once you've done that, verify your predictions using the graphing technology. Now, after going through the investigation, you should see there are some common characteristics. For all of our logarithmic functions, we saw that if we had an a value, but our base was 10, our x-intercept was always 1. Now for this one, because we've got a positive a value, we also know that this is going to be an increasing function, right? Because otherwise it would have a negative in front. So our y-intercept, well, we have none. The domain would go from 0 to infinity. And the range would go from negative infinity to infinity. And the end behavior is going to go from quadrant 4 to quadrant 1. What is this going to look like? Well, it's going to get really close to that y-axis, but not touch it. And then go through here. Now, because this 15 is quite large. This is going to be a very steep increase. So if we want to exaggerate that a little bit, we know that the y-intercept here is 1. This is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So again, this gets really, really close to the y-axis, but doesn't actually touch the y-axis. And remember when we're talking about our quadrants, this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're going from quadrant 4 to quadrant 1, very steep because of that 15 there. We've got a y-intercept, well, there are none, and an x-intercept of 1. Let's take a look at example 2. In example 2, we've got a natural log, so it's ln. All that means is it's still a log, behaves the same, all the behaviors are the same, and you would have seen that in the investigation, but the base is e. We can see in this one, though, we've got a negative 4. So let's take a look at those characteristics. So because this is a decreasing function, the end behavior, I'm just going to start there, goes from quadrant 1 to quadrant 4. So we're starting here, really close to the y-axis. I can get even closer. And then, there we go. Now it's quite steep again, so I can make it even steeper there. Not as steep as the 14, but it is a 4, right? Now my y-intercept, there are none. x-intercept is 1 again. So that's 1, none. Domain then goes from 0 to infinity. Well, that hasn't changed. Remember, round bracket for the 0 because it approaches 0 but doesn't actually cross 0. And the range goes from negative infinity to infinity. All right, so in general, this is what we see for increasing and decreasing logarithmic functions. Let's take a look at example three. Which function matches each graph below? Provide your reasoning. So we can see increasing functions, we can see decreasing functions, we could see functions that cross the x-axis, and we see functions that cross the y-axis. So not only are we distinguishing between increasing and decreasing logarithmic functions, but we also have to see which ones are logarithmic and which ones are exponential. Now I can see right away that graphs A and C don't cross the y-axis, so I would say that graphs A and C are logarithmic. Oops. Are logarithmic. And then that means that our other two graphs, B and C, they don't cross the x-axis, but they do cross the y-axis. So 
that means graphs B and D are exponential. Once you've figured that out, well, A and C, one is increasing and one is decreasing, and then for B and D, one is increasing, one is decreasing. So we should be able to look at our graphs and distinguish right away which one's which. So I can see if I'm going to look at the first function, y equals 5 times 2 to the power of x, I can see that that's going to be an increasing function. How do I know? Well, our function is of the form y equals a times b to the exponent of x, and I know if b is greater than 1, then it's increasing. And I know if b is between 0 and 1, then it's decreasing. So I know that equation 1 then matches graph b, because graph b is the only exponential function that's increasing. So we can say that graph b matches equation 1 because it's an exponential function that is increasing. b is equal to 2 and b is greater than 1. We can also know that it matches because your a value is equal to 5, which means that your y-intercept is equal to 5. And that's true as well because we can see that right here on the graph. Okay, let's go back and do equation 2. Well, equation 2 is also exponential, but it's a decreasing function because b is between 0 and 1. Your a value is 2. And if we look at our other exponential function that crosses the x-axis, that would be equation d, you can see that, in fact, your y-intercept is 2. So let's write that out. So it's just writing out exactly what we discussed earlier. Let's take a look at our two logarithmic functions. We've got one increasing and one decreasing, but with logarithmic functions, we know that one's increasing or decreasing because of the a value, right? So an a value that's positive, as in equation 3, would be an increasing function. So 3 is going to match c, whereas with equation 4, we can see the a value is negative. So equation 4 is going to match our decreasing graph, which is a. The fact that equation 3 is uh, log base 10, and equation 4 is uh, natural log, doesn't change the behavior of the logarithmic functions. They both still have no y-intercept, and they still have an x-intercept of 1. Alright, let's write out the explanation. So graph C matches equation 3, because a is greater than 0. It's an increasing logarithmic function. Graph A matches equation 4, since A is less than 0, it's a decreasing logarithmic function. The last page of the notes here is just a nice summary, whoops, it's just a nice summary here. Uh, the key ideas and what we need to know in terms of increasing and decreasing functions. And we can see, again, that both um, log base 10 and natural logs are reflections of their counterpart. So we can see that y equals log x is a reflection of the graph y equals 10 to the x. y equals ln of x is the reflection of y equals e to the power of x. Those are inverses of one another and they're reflected along the graph of y equals x. We look up here, our increasing functions are when a is greater than 0, decreasing when a is less than 0. And these are our common characteristics that we're used to. We want to rewrite these as 0 to infinity and negative infinity to infinity. You can do that if that makes more sense to you. Thanks for joining me today.